Hello and welcome to the 1 106 of a second photography podcast. In this episode I'm going to be talking about buying gifts for photographers. We've just had Black Friday and it's almost December here for me. Of course if you're listening in the future then it could be December or it could be past December or it could be next December, who knows. I'm going to talk about gifts for photographers because it's quite seasonal. So I think it might be best to get your other half or maybe people who may buy presents to you to listen to this podcast because you may not buy yourself a gift that's photography based. It's likely to be someone else buying it for you. I think it's difficult to buy a gift for photographers because they're going to be quite selective. They're going to already have a lot of what they need unless they're starting out. And it's expensive to buy gifts for photographers because photographers need cameras and lenses and accessories. Now cameras and lenses are expensive. Accessories not so much, but accessories can be expensive. So the first thing I would consider if you are buying a gift for a photographer I'd actually consider maybe you don't. And the reason I'm saying that is it's very expensive. It can be very difficult to get the right thing because let's face it, if you've got a really good tripod that's really good and you use it all the time, someone buys you another tripod, you're not going to use it. As a photographer, you would want something like a new lens or a new camera body to really get some use out of it or something you don't have. So I do think it's going to be difficult to buy a gift for a photographer. So my first suggestion is don't. Maybe buy them something else they're interested in or something that isn't photography related because it's very difficult. And it's very personal as well, what a photographer does and doesn't want. They're going to know what they want. You're not necessarily going to know what they require. Maybe think about giving them cash or an Amazon voucher so they can put that money towards an expensive lens, camera or an expensive accessory. Think about maybe some alternatives. At the moment, a photographer will take an image and they're they're probably going to want to display it on the internet or put it up on their wall. Now, how do you display things on the internet in a nice sort of way? I mean, you could get a specific website that acts as your portfolio from a provider like Squarespace or Smug Mug, but they cost money on their yearly subscription. Now, that would be a great gift for a photographer because it's an expense they don't have to find and then they've got somewhere to put their images. Maybe they'll be interested in a photography book, a book of someone else's photography because they appreciate photography. So that's going to be a more affordable gift for a photographer. I'm going to say travel. When I say travel, I mean actually going somewhere with a photographer. So if you're a photographer, you need to go places to take pictures. So why not take your photographer somewhere? It doesn't have to be expensive. It could be your local city. So you drive them into the local city. They do some photography. You buy them lunch, that sort of thing. It doesn't have to be a weekend getaway to New York or Venice or anywhere like that just going somewhere with the photographer maybe paying for it maybe paying for a hotel and buying them the lunch you can also get non-photography gear that's going to be helpful to a photographer so this could be something like gloves hat thermos flask if they get up early and they go out and they do landscape photography those sort of gifts are going to keep them warm and going to keep them happy while they're doing their photography so you could think about Maybe not photography gifts, but things that will help them go out into the wilderness and the wild and do some photography. Another good option is an Adobe Creative Cloud subscription. And there are often deals to be found around Black Friday and Cyber Monday. So most photographers will use a program like Lightroom or like Photoshop to do image cataloging and image manipulation. Now Adobe is clearly the king in this area. A few years ago they switched to a subscription model rather than buying it outright. Now I've bought my Adobe products outright because I hate the idea of a subscription model. So this gift wouldn't be good to me unless I wanted something like Premiere, which I I don't at the moment. It may be suitable for someone who wants to get into using Adobe products because this is one of the only ways you can do it. You could also consider getting a Photoshop alternative. So I've got Affinity Photo and Affinity Photo is really good. I don't think it's quite as good as Photoshop, but it's almost there. But the key thing for the Affinity Photo is it has a one-off cost of £50, approximately £50. And that's it. You buy it and you can use it and that's that. There's no subscription to pay and it's pretty much the same as Photoshop. When it first came out, it came out on Mac only and now it's on PC. So that could be a good gift for a photographer. Maybe they've got an old copy of Photoshop and they want to do a bit more in it. That's certainly worth the upgrade. You can also get small things that have a big impact on photography. So those are things for landscape photographers like polarizers and ND filters. They're really useful bits of kit. They're not too expensive. Of course, you can get very expensive versions of them, but you can get them at a reasonable price and they'll certainly be welcomed by a landscape photographer. Reflectors are handy if a photographer doesn't already have one and you can get ones that are made by recognizable brands and ones that are made by brands you wouldn't have heard of. Pretty much there's no real difference one may last longer than the other, but 
that for me, the jury's out on that. So a reflector is really useful because it helps to gather more light for a subject, whether that's macro, product or a person. It just helps balance things out and give a nicer sort of image. Of course, you need someone to hold that reflector. And that brings me on to the next one. You could assist on a photo shoot. You could give your photographer a voucher, which says one, two, three times assisting sessions because an assistant can be a huge help on a portrait shoot they hold a light they carry things they make a great difference to a portrait shoot and if you wanted to hire an assistant it would actually be quite expensive to hire someone i imagine you have to pay them between 10 and 20 pounds an hour if you can do that for free you'll save the photographer that cost so that will really elevate the photographer's shoot and it won't cost you anything and it won't cost them anything light stands are a reasonable price and they can help a photographer hold a flash if they don't have an assistant and I mentioned tripods earlier, but I'm going to talk more about travel tripods. Not only are they cheaper, but they'll allow a photographer to have a second tripod just for travel. So it's likely most photographers have a good, big, sturdy tripod. It's probably going to be quite heavy, but they're going to be quite happy with it. A travel tripod would be good for those occasions they suspect they may need a tripod, but they don't want to lug one about. So a travel tripod could be quite good. You can get small ones like a Gorilla Pod or Manfrotto small one. Get medium-sized ones. You can get lightweight ones. So a travel tripod is a good alternative gift for a photographer. So let me know what you think. Did you even broach the subject of buying your photographer a photography gift or did you just get them a more conventional gift? Do you think this advice is helpful to a non-photographer on what to buy a photographer? I'd love to hear your thoughts and don't forget you can find out more on Twitter and I'll leave my Twitter description in the show notes.